so Eugene's involved, he's helping to set up the Truth and Reconciliation platform. Um, that's obviously significant, that kind of initiative over here, is it, Seamus, do you think? Well, it's very significant uh, in two ways. <clears throat> Number one, the public meetings have enthralled people and saddened people yeah, yeah. and informed people. Yeah. Uh, the reality is that once Eugene and his colleagues stood in front of them and told them in plain terms what happened, mm -hmm. they began to realise the awful, the awfulness of mm -hmm. what Seamus Heaney called neighbourly murders. Uh, that, that term is remarkable for it. Because when you have neighbours killing neighbours, it poisons the entire society. People become suspicious, they become angry, they go into their own tribe for, for comfort and protection, and the type of good neighbourliness uh, is affected greatly. The second uh, importance of what Eugene is doing, and I must pay tribute to him, after the trauma he came through, uh, the way in which he has been able to mobilise uh, people within schools and o other organisations, farmers' unions, uh, to work together. And uh, that, where he lives, is a very difficult uh, uh, issue. Yeah. What's can you? What's your memory of? I mean, of those times, you know, of the the Reavy killings. And do you remember much? No, I do I remember them all. Yeah, there was a string of them. First one I was aware of was a young fellow called John Pat Cunningham, over outside the Moy. Uh, I was. Uh, he was a. Uh, a young man who was educationally subnormal. Mm. He was in the field as he always did every day to go out and look at the cattle. Mm. Soldiers were on the other side of the field. They, he'd never seen a, someone dressed like this before. And he ran frightened and was shot dead. Mm. That was part the Reavy killings and the Magello hair killings, all within a space of a quarter of a mile, reeked of savagery and a sectarian hatred that uh, is hard to define. A soldier was involved in shooting, he shot a uh, Magello hair. Policemen were involved mm. in the killings of the three uh, uh, Reavy guys. Mm. To do it in a home, mm. to kill people, assassinate them, three mm. young men, as they sat around the fire watching television, mm. is a violation of the, mm. the place of the home yeah. and a violation of every every common denominator that one would expect within uh, a, pl a police service. The remarkable thing about that uh, afterwards was the absolute Christian way in which his family, and Eugene himself of course, dealt with it. No retaliations, no, no bitterness. Mm. The fact that they were able to go to the survivor of the King's Mill yeah, yeah. and sat neighbour to neighbour talking to him. Yeah. I think that was evidence of it all. Yeah. King's Mill's murder was Horrific. The, you know the, the story of it. 
the men were got out of the line. The workers coming from the factory. They asked to to put their hands up on the van. And then someone shouted, who's the Catholic? Mm. And Reggie Chapman thought it was a, a loyalist gang mm. going to shoot the Catholic. Mm. And he took his arm, his mm. hand, mm. and pressed it in a way that uh, was saying, mm. don't, no, you're all right, don't, lad, we'll not. Mm. We will protect. And th that image mm. is uh, something which mm. lasts with me. Yeah, yeah so I, I think my memory, I was a, I moved here in 84 from New Zealand. I wasn't, there wasn't many people moving this way, you know, and uh, yeah. so, but I remember you as a politician back then and I always was struck by the fact that you were, you know, at, really outspoken um, person speaking, wanting to see truth spoken and, uh, and you know, in terms of truth and reconciliation platform, like how, how much do you think truth is important in healing and uh, in these situations like over here, you know? Well, <clears throat> this country, especially these parts of this country, the truth is valued. You're not going to win anybody over, or you're not going to influence anybody by telling them half truths. Uh, no, the truth hurts, but the truth hurts all of us. But if we're not working on the basis of truth, then we're going nowhere, as we are at the present moment of time. Truth is also, I believe, at the heart of reconciliation. Mm. Because if you don't trust the person that you're reconciling with, mm. you're not going to reconcile. Mm. So it, it, it's fundamental there. And the one great thing about the organisation that Eugene has created mm. is that it is told the presentations are made straight out, mm. no pretense, mm. no cover-ups, no gilding the lily, mm. the plain facts. Mm. And those truths will last. Mm. The <coughs> aberrations won't. Mm. <coughs> Excuse me. So our neighbour in, uh, in Rus Trevor is Tommy Sands, obviously, and you know Tommy and um, I taught Tommy. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and his brothers, you know, and uh, and and Anne, Annie, the sister, yeah, and, uh, and and did you know the father? I didn't know. No, Mick was a great yeah, character. Yeah, yeah. To me, at the weekends to the, the <coughs> toner's bar, <coughs> and he could have kept the entire bar going. <laughs> He was the greatest conversationalist. Yeah, yeah, they're all performers, you know. Oh, yeah. But he's uh, got this great uh, video of him, and he got the school kids from both sides at the time of the Good Friday Agreement and, and singing. Do you remember that? And, and what are your just a couple of memories of, of that whole, you know, Good Friday Agreement? You got Senator George Mitchell and uh, historic times. You know, we just had the 20th anniversary a couple, two weeks ago. Yes, I remember very clearly, Tommy, somebody came in uh, to tell me that Tommy had the group, the group outside. I went out, said hello to them, and forgot altogether to get, but getting a photograph of it. I didn't. I was had other things on my mind. Uh, but it showed very clearly, and the balance, because you had the invasion, as it were, by... Paisley and the DUP the night before, and here you have children and Tommy with music yeah, yeah. trying to get peace. Yeah. So the, the counterpoint there was yeah. stark. Yeah. Yeah. That was a, 
remarkable period of time. Uh, we were negotiating right. Um, our last meeting was three o'clock. Three o'clock in the morning. <coughs> in the morning with the Ulster Unionists. And we shook hands on it. And uh, it has changed things immensely in this sense. We've got peace. And you can't buy peace in any way. And we have got at least the beginnings of people starting to work together. And when I look at what's happening now, you can't say there is trust between them, anything but it. What you can say is that if you haven't got trust, or using trust, there'll not be reconciliation. And there isn't. And we have to try, try and get the, the humanity and the compassion that Eugene and people have shown to get that into the political process. People are responding to it. We've seen it, numerous meetings. Um, but we have to face the difficult questions and we have to answer them. Maybe just, I know you've got to move on, so just take two more questions. Maybe uh, just thinking of um, if you were to give general advice, you know, not advice, but and you look at other places of conflict, like when I, I go to Lebanon every year, go to the West Bank and um, uh, South Africa, Rwanda, Burundi, you know. Bosnia, what do you think is some of the ingredients of real transformation in the society and reconciliation and dealing with events that have happened 10 years ago or 100 years ago? 400 years ago. Yeah. This wall, that was the perimeter wall of the first place that it was planted wow. in 1610. The first place? Yeah, that's it. That was the perimeter wall. You start with a basic, a very basic uh, position. And it is this, and I speak now of Northern Ireland, and it has a universality, I believe, elsewhere, where each community can call this place home and regard it as their home and more importantly have it regarded as their home by the other community and a home means peace and it means stability and it means protection all of the things that we associate with home there's a good starting point and the other factor that I think is hugely important is that we look at the problems. We look them straight in the eye. Agree what is the problem and then agree how we might be able to deal with that. And in a divided society here, where you have a clash of identities and for, in effect, the very place itself, Northern Ireland, uh, part of the population regard themselves as British. Mm. I, Eugene, others regard ourselves as Irish. But to be honest, People have a right to call themselves whatever they want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we respect that. Yeah. And then if you build the respect onto the, the home base and you start to tailor your political thoughts uh, in how we can 
make this a better place. How it can make everybody comfortable in their home, their homeland. How you, you can be at peace with yourself and with others. And if you were, we were all uh, committed to doing that, this could be a very, it is a very pleasant place to live, yeah. but it, be, it could be a very, very important centre of a number of things, a number of possibilities. Yeah. That's great. Eugene, what do you remember of uh, Seamus Mallon and, uh, you know, during the, during the Troubles and all, and I think... Well, uh, I, I, I remember Seamus coming to our house that night, and my father uh, had a great respect for Seamus, and uh, <clears throat> it gave us, it gave us a sense of support that that someone like Seamus Mullen would take time out and come. And he was, you were an MP, he was an MP at, still time, yeah. at that time, yeah. Uh, and offer his condolences and try to, try to make some sense out of, out of what happened because uh, we were all shocked. And <clears throat> Paddy O'Hanlon came as well and he was a colleague of Seamus's and different people. And it's a time, it's at times like that that you, that you, uh, <clears throat> uh, realize that you can't cope on your own. You need support, and the only support you get is is from the community and from your neighbours. Wow. Yeah. Uh, it's good. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Seamus. Yeah. Good to see you again. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and you're always welcome in Restrever. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, very. It was good to have the.